एंड वेलकम नमस्कार रिग्रेशन क्लासिकल अप्रोच एंड दिस टाइम नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व अ केस विथ द हेल्प ऑफ डेविएशन टेकन फ्रॉम मीन और एरिथमेटिक मीन दैट मीन्स वी आर गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट द कोफिशियंस ऑफ रिग्रेशन थ्रू द फॉर्मूला इन विच वी आर गोइंग टू सब्सटीट्यूट द डेविएशन और अदर समेशन और टोटल ऑफ द डेविएशन टेकन फ्रॉम their arithmetic mean but for this purpose it is necessary to have the arithmetic means as integer values obviously in this case the means are going to be the integer values these are 1 to 9 variable x takes values 1 to 9 so the total must be 45 sigma x and hence x bar will be 45 by 9 so x bar comes to 5 And in case of y, the summation should be nine plus eight seventeen twenty seven thirty nine fifty sixty three seventy seven ninety three and one hundred eight. Sigma y comes to one hundred eight, so y bar should be one hundred eight divided by n nine. That means twelve. Both the means are integer values, so we can easily take the deviation taken from arithmetic mean. So x minus x bar will be x minus five. Okay, one minus five minus four two minus five minus three three minus five minus two four minus five minus one five minus five zero six minus five one seven minus five two eight minus five three and nine minus five four. Okay, now what is the unique or special feature of the deviations taken from arithmetic mean? That is, its summation must be zero. Four plus three plus two plus one, ten positive, and minus four minus three minus two minus one summation is minus ten. So summation of deviations taken from mean comes to zero. That means there is no error, no mistake in this column. I always prefer to check whether this total is really zero or not. I never advise to write zero without checking the. Actual total because this is a very nice checkpoint. Similarly, y minus y bar will be y minus twelve, nine minus twelve minus three eight minus twelve minus four ten minus twelve minus two twelve minus twelve zero, eleven minus twelve minus one thirteen minus twelve one fourteen minus twelve two sixteen minus twelve four fifteen minus twelve three. The positive total comes to one plus two three plus three six plus four positive ten. Now it must be negative ten. Minus four, minus three, minus seven, minus two, minus nine, minus one, minus ten. So this summation is also zero, and that means there is no error in this column. Why should I suggest every time to check whether there is any error in this column or not? Because all the three remaining columns are dependent on these two columns. If there is any Even a single error in any of these two columns, the remaining three columns will be with the effect of that error, and the entire data will be wrong. All the summations will be wrong, and all the calculations with the help uh, uh, or all the final answers we arrive at with this with the help of these all five summations will be wrong. So always check the correctness of. these two columns invariably i mean all the columns invariably now some uh, multiplication of these two product of these two x minus x bar into y minus y bar minus 4 into minus 3 12 minus 3 into minus 4 12 to minus 2 into minus 2 4 anything into 0 0 1 into 1 1 2 into 2 4 3 into 4 12 4 into 3 12 okay 12 plus 12 24 plus 4 28 plus 1 29 29 24 4 28 28 56 total will be 57 that is summation of x minus x bar into y minus y bar that is called summation of the products of the deviations taken from actual or arithmetic mean now it is turn of x minus x bar the whole square And it will be square of this column. Minus four square is sixteen. Minus three square is nine. Minus two square is four. Minus one square is one. 
0 is 0, 1 square is 1, 2 square is 4, 3 square is 9, 4 square is 16. 16 plus 9, 25 plus 5, 30, 30 plus 30, 16. And the last column we need y minus y bar the whole square. Squares of the deviations taken from actual mean. Minus 3 square 9, minus 4 square 16, minus 2 square 4, 0 square 0, minus 1 square 1, 1 square 1, 2 square 4, 4 square 16, 3 square 9, 16 plus 9, 25 plus 5, 30, 31, 35, 51, 16. Sigma y minus y bar the whole square. Mind well, it is not necessary to have the equal summation of both of these columns. This is just a coincidence. Okay? Now, remaining calculations. First, we are going to find out the coefficients of regression and in that, the first will be the coefficient of regression of y on x, that will be b y x. Sigma x minus x bar into y minus y bar. That means summation of the products of the deviations taken from arithmetic mean upon independent variable is x so sigma x minus x bar the whole square so it will be 57 divided by 60 so b y x comes to 0.95 0.95 ok similarly we are going to calculate the coefficient of regression of x on y now x becomes the dependent variable and y independent b x y Sigma x minus x bar into y minus y bar upon independent variable sigma y minus y bar the whole square it is also 57 by 60 so bxy also comes to 0.95 since byx and bxy are 0.95 its geometric mean also be 0.95 that means if we calculate the coefficient of correlation for this data, it will also be 0.95 and that also positive because the coefficients of regression are positive and we know the important characteristic, important property that the sign of coefficient of correlation as well as coefficients of regression is always same. Okay, now this is turn of lines of regression. Lines of regression. First it will be of y on x and the standard form is y or y cap or y c or y e equals to a plus b x. There b stands for b y x because y is dependent variable. And in this case we can find out either directly the equation or through finding the value of a in most of the schools and colleges the teachers are habituated to suggest the method of finding first a so we are going to take that track only a will be y bar minus b y x into x bar so a will be y bar 12 minus b y x 0.95 into b x bar 5 so it will be 12 minus 0.95 into 5 that will be 4.75 and hence A comes to 7.25 and Y cap equals to A plus B X so Y cap will be 7.25 plus 0.95 X because B stands for BYX. So this is the equation of the line of regression of Y on X. Similarly, now this is turn of the line of regression of X on Y. Now we believe that X is dependent on Y. This is something different from our basic say axiom of mathematics where we take dependent variable as Y only. But in case of X, uh, rather correlation and regression, we take X also as dependent variable. This is something unique. The class In classical approach of regression also, we always take X as dependent on Y. Because when 
we study correlation, we believe that y is dependent on x, at the same time x is also dependent on y. And as we know that Carl Pearson developed the <coughs> concept of regression on the basis of coefficient of correlation as well as standard deviations. So the same thing happens in regression also of x on y and the standard form is x cap is a or c I prefer to use different sign by where b stands for bxy. C will be x bar minus b x y into y bar. Therefore, x bar is 5 minus 0.95 into 12. So, C will be 5 minus 12 into 0.95. That will be 11.4. So, C comes to negative <coughs> 6.4. X cap C plus BY where B is BXY. So the line of regression or the equation of the line of regression of X on Y comes to X cap equals to minus 6.4 plus 0.95 Y or X cap equals to 0.95 Y minus 6.4 because it is advisable to write the negative term afterwards. So in this case we used the technique of substituting the summations of the deviations to, taken from arithmetic mean. See this is actually very easy but the most important condition is to use this formula we should have x bar as well as y bar both the means as integer values. That's it. Thank you very much.